If you haven't seen my first video on if Germany won World War 1, go check it out real quick so you can get caught up for this video. In the last video, I talked about how Germany could have won World War 1, and just what a victory would have looked like. And in this video, I'll be talking about the details of what a peace treaty between the Central Powers and the Allies would have looked like. First, let's start with the smallest of the Central Powers, Bulgaria. Bulgaria didn't enter the war until the 14th of October 1915, a full year after the war originally began. They entered after having signed a deal known as the Treaty of Amity, an alliance between the Kingdom of Bulgaria and the German Empire, which we'll call the Bulgaria-Germany Treaty because we don't have all day. It signaled an alliance with the Central Powers where they were promised land and troops in return for their support in the fight against the Allies. The Bulgaria-Germany Treaty signed was actually signed in secret because both the Allies and the Central Powers were vying for Bulgarian support and the territories promised in this deal were likely to be what Bulgaria would demand out of what we'll call the Treaty of Geneva, the treaty that ended this alternate history World War I. In the Bulgaria-Germany Treaty, the German Empire promised the whole of Vardar Macedonia to Bulgaria, as well as the part of Old Serbia that was to the east of the Morava River. Also, in the case of Romania or Greece joining the war, Bulgaria was also promised to be given back the lands lost in the Second Balkan War. From Greece, this meant traditional Macedonia, including Thessaloniki, and possibly even the island of Crete, which has been a point of dispute between Greece and Bulgaria until the Treaty of Bucharest in 1913, which is what ended the Second Balkan War. From Romania, this meant regaining southern Dobruja, which offered key access to the Black Sea, including the fortress of Silistria. These gains would increase Bulgaria's size and population by about 75% as well as offer key access to strategically important areas, such as the Aegean Sea. The Ottomans also entered the war after it began, but only by a few months, by staging a surprise attack on Russia's Black Sea coast on the 29th of October 1914. Originally, the Ottomans' main goal of joining the war was just to solidify their own position and prevent their collapse. However, as it became clear that the Russian Empire was weakening, their goal shifted to gaining the territories that had been lost in previous years. In our timeline, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk gave back to Turkey much of what was lost in the Russo-Turkish War, which specifically meant Ardahan, Kars, and Batumi. Further, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia all became independent, which is important because of what was happening to the Armenians within the Ottoman Empire. The policy of forced relocation and even ethnic cleansing, which we now call the Armenian Genocide, would have likely led to the Ottomans supporting the creation of an independent Armenia. The Ottoman Empire would also likely attempt to force some sort of economic union over these smaller independent states in the Caucasus. The Ottomans also hoped that they might be able to at least gain influence, if not outright control, of the Egyptian and Tripolitanian areas, but they simply didn't have the leverage to make such demands from the British or Italians. Ottoman gains in the Treaty of Geneva would have been relatively minor, but would have made to help establish the long-term security of the empire. Unlike the other two central power members we just discussed, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was there from the very beginning, when their heir was assassinated by a Serbian national. This initial cause led to one major goal of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the full integration of the Kingdom of Serbia. What wouldn't be given to Bulgaria and what wasn't already a part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire would be added to their imperial lands. The Austro-Hungarian crown also hoped to impose some sort of economic union onto the Balkan areas near to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In the north, there was a major source of contention between them and Germany over the fate of Poland. The Austro-Hungarian crown was very much hoping for large portions of Poland for itself, portions that the German Empire was also looking at taking for themselves. In the early days of the war, the Austro-Hungarians were looking to force their hand when the war ended and directly opposed Germany's attempts to take the whole Polish area. However, as their failures increased, forcing the German army to bail them out on countless occasions, they began to realize it probably wouldn't be a great idea to try and oppose the nation that saved them so many times. Ultimately, they would have likely gotten only small portions of southern Poland. The territories added to the Austro-Hungarian Empire by the Treaty of Geneva, much like the Ottoman Empire, were relatively minor, and were meant to mostly stabilize the already weakening and fragile state they were in. Now, let's take a look at the most significant member of the Central Powers, and the namesake of this video series, the German Empire. 
Not only did the Germans have some intense demands, but they also would have had the ability to see a lot of their demands through to completion in the Treaty of Geneva. First would be their demands from Russia, which were quite harsh in our timeline, and would have been about equal in this timeline. In our timeline, the harshness of the Brest-Litovsk Treaty was actually used as justification for how harsh the terms of the Treaty of Versailles were. Germany would have demanded all of Russian Poland that wasn't already given to Austria-Hungary, but they would have also forced the independence of several nations, Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Germany's goal here was to force the Baltic states to become vassals of the Kaiser, ruled by German princelings. Ukraine would have been forced into an economic union, but not outright vassalized, because this would not likely have been okay with either the Ottoman or Austro-Hungarian Empire. They would have also forced economic reparations out of the newly forming Soviet Russian state, which would have been able to overthrow the Tsar earlier than our timeline with a more intense German invasion. Moving west, there were no real goals Germany had with the Kingdom of Italy, but they would have likely forced some sort of trade deals or reparations out of them. Luxembourg would have been outright integrated as another member of the German Empire directly. Belgium would have been made a vassal state, similar to the Baltic nations in the east, and Belgium's holdings in Africa, what's now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo, would have been annexed into Germany's other colonial holdings, along with its vast rubber plantations. If Portugal were in the war, then their colonial holdings would also have been subject to annexation by the German Empire. The British Empire is a different story, however. Because of the fact that the British were across an island, still had a vastly superior navy, and were not under direct threat by the Germans, the German Empire would not have been able to impose any sort of harsh reparations or territorial cessations. Even with the oil shortages that we talked about in previous videos, it just isn't likely that Germany would have been able to mount any sort of invasion onto the British mainland. At best, they would have been able to get modest reparations and treaties to ensure the security of German holdings in Africa that were near British holdings. Now is where we get to the biggest loser of the entire peace deal, the French. In our timeline, the French were the biggest proponents of putting harsh reparations on the Germans. And even though some of us might like to think otherwise, the Germans weren't going to be any more generous. First and foremost, the Germans would have forced massive reparations out of the French government so crippling that the French wouldn't be able to rearm themselves, along with the other provisions saying that the French wouldn't be able to rearm anyways. The Germans also wanted the destruction of all forts between Dunkirk and Boulogne, so as to further weaken the French's ability to rearm and defend itself in the future. The Germans would also demand that the French cut all of their trade deals with Britain, so they could trade only with and through the German Empire furthering their ideal of a Europe that was dependent on them economically. Additionally, France would be forced to cede the rest of the Alsace-Lorraine territory, as well as nearby coal strips such as Brie. Finally, and most significantly, the Germans would annex large portions of French Africa, finalizing the dream of creating a massive African colony spanning the entire continent, known as Middle Africa. In the Treaty of Geneva, Germany would not only come out stronger than they were before, but as one of the preeminent powers in both Europe and the world. In the end, a victory for the Central Powers would have allowed for massive territorial and economic gains for many of their participants. While a victory by the Central Powers would have created at least temporary stability for them and a feeling of greatness, it would not have lasted forever as probably hoped. However, we'll get into all of that in the next video, where we'll discuss the aftermath of the Treaty of Geneva and what this means for the rest of the world. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the Treaty of Geneva, and what these nations might have demanded. My theory here is only one possibility created by the intentions of the Central Powers going into the war. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, it really helps me out. Also, if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content. Ring the bell next to it to get notifications for my videos, since I don't upload very frequently. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with me and my channel, you can follow my Twitter. Links to that and my Facebook are down below. Thank you very much for watching, this has been Historical Hindsight and I'll be seeing you soon.